In today's news, China donates 4 million U.S. dollars to build friendship school in Egypt. In Veg News, First Vegan Fair in Tampere, Finland, raises awareness about the compassionate plant-based diet. Please stay tuned for all this and more on Supreme Master Television, your constructive global TV channel. Today in history, October 16th, Cardinal Carol Josef Motiwa was elected the 263rd Roman Catholic Pope in 1978 and was proclaimed Pope John Paul II. Born in Bardowice, Poland on May 18, 1920, His Holiness was the first Polish Pope and was the third longest reigning. He spoke eight languages and traveled more than any Pope in history, having visited 129 countries. Pope John Paul II established World Youth Day in 1985, now a yearly faith renewal event which brings together millions of young individuals from around the globe. May the shining example of His Holiness Pope John Paul II encourage us to create a future of peace, compassion for the generations to come. Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association Relief News Update from Colombia. More than 100,000 people have been affected by recent floods and landslides caused by heavy rains throughout more than half the country. The Colombian government and army have evacuated approximately 17,000 victims, with warnings that forecasts of additional rains could worsen the situation. Supreme Master Ching Hai expressed her concern and immediately sent 30,000 U.S. dollars, an amount that could purchase an equivalent of 192,000 U.S. dollars in relief supplies in the United States based on the cost of living in Colombia. Supreme Master Ching Hai also asks for updates whenever disasters such as these occur. With Master's permission, we would like to share with our viewers the following report from our Colombian Association members. October 14, 2008. Most benevolent master. Regarding floods in Colombia, thousands of flood victims have been evacuated to churches and hospitals after heavy winter rains cost three people their lives and thousands were left homeless. The heavy rains have destroyed infrastructure in hundreds of townships and villages across the country, the most affected being those located in the country's Caribbean coast. The majority of the flood victims are the less fortunate, living in simply built houses on steep hills. The local governments are helping to evacuate victims, manage temporary shelters, and deliver humanitarian aid such as food, kitchen equipment, plastic sheeting, and blankets. We've checked with the government and were informed that basic supplies and food were lacking for all the flood victims. In addition, more than 5,000 families in five remote communities in the Department of Córdoba are in need of food. These are Monteria, Buena Vista, Monitos, San Peleo, and La Apartada. Our association members are preparing for the relief work. We sincerely pray for Master's love and blessing. Thank you, Master, for being with us always. Humbly from association members in Colombia. We thank Supreme Master Ching Hai for allowing us to share this report with our viewers who may wish to know more details about the situation for people in Colombia. We also thank our association's foreign group for providing this timely information. Supreme Master Ching Hai's concern and assistance reaches all those in distress, no matter where they live. We pray for God's protection of the most vulnerable in Colombia. May your kinder hearts and actions meanwhile bring a safer, more peaceful world. engulf Lebanese woodlands. Students from the Arab University campus in Dibia were evacuated, while families also escaped from the blaze in the Shouf Mountain north of Beirut. The Lebanese army and firefighters faced both strong winds and regional landmines in their attempts to control the blaze, with three soldiers and one firefighter being injured. Fortunately, the civil defense reports that the fires are now 98% extinguished. Our deepest gratitude to the soldiers and firefighters for their brave and heroic efforts. We pray for the quick recovery of the region so that all residents can return to their normal lives. May devastations to nature such as these be alleviated through our more compassionate actions. 
Supreme Master Ching Hai wants to convey this message of gratitude to all governments, organizations, and relief workers from every corner of the world. Thank you, all the international and national help that brings care and necessities to afflicted victims. Thank you, all the relief workers, for taking time and forsaking your own comfort, even traveling great distance on unfavorable roads and conditions to bring love and assistance to people in time of need. May heaven bless you abundantly for your generosity and noble sacrifice. North Korean Foreign Minister arrives in Russia for nuclear discussions. As part of a delegation, Foreign Minister Paku Ichun is meeting with his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov to discuss the resuming of six-party talks over North Korea's denuclearization. Following their first day of meeting, the two foreign ministers each affirmed their country's wish to continue bilateral cooperation, with the spokesman later saying that Foreign Minister Lavrov would visit North Korea in 2009. I respectful salute Your Excellencies Russia and North Korea on your fruitful meetings and best wishes for your country's lasting and mutually beneficial friendship. Khan returns to the integrated Israeli town of Acre. Following the visit of President Shimon Peres, along with two chief rabbis and the interior minister, an agreement was made to form an interreligious panel of rabbis and sheikhs to maintain harmony among the town's Arab and Jewish populations. President Peres said, both religions must be capable of living with a sense of mutual respect and pray to a God who is one to us all. Our sincere appreciation, Your Excellency, and all who are working to restore lasting peace in Acre. May it soon again exemplify a community of shared dignity and understanding among all residents. Canadian Prime Minister re-elected. Prime Minister Stephen Harper has won the popular vote in the general elections and will be extending his term in office. Following the election, the Prime Minister stated, Canadians have voted to move our country forward, and they have done so with confidence in the future. Our congratulations on your re-election, Prime Minister Harper. With heaven's grace, may your guidance bring abundant harmony and prosperity to the Canadian people. Ship and crew rescued near the Somali coast. On Tuesday, Somali Coast Guard and military personnel freed a cargo ship and its crew of two Somalis and nine Syrians near the port of Bosasso. The 11 crew members were released unharmed. To improve security in the region's waters, international agencies such as the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and the European Union are planning to send units to protect and escort vessels such as those carrying food aid to Somalia. Our thankfulness, Somali personnel and all others involved for the safe freedom of the 11 crew members, whom we wish many happy celebrations of life with loved ones. We also appreciate the international organization's commitment to ensuring the protection of future coastal travelers and pray that all may be graced with safe passage. Young hockey talent departs unexpectedly. Alexei Cherepanov, Russia's rising hockey star, passed away suddenly during a game near Moscow at 19 years of age. Mr. Cherepanov apparently collapsed due to a heart condition that had gone unnoticed. The young athlete was part of a national junior team that won a bronze medal in the World Cup last year. New York Rangers general manager Glenn Sather, whose team recently selected Mr. Cherpanov for the next season's play, said, Alexei was an intelligent, energetic young man with tremendous talent and an extremely bright future. We are most saddened to hear of the untimely loss of the well-loved Alexei Cherpanov. Our heartfelt sympathies to his family, friends, and teammates. May his soul rest peacefully in heaven's everlasting love. Aravinda Adiga wins the United Kingdom's Man Booker Prize. The 33-year-old Indian author accepted the prestigious literary prize as the youngest contestant this year for his debut novel, The White Tiger. Mr. Adiga stated that the theme of the book, which depicts the life of a rickshaw puller named Balram Hawaii, who comes from disadvantaged circumstances, was intended to bring light to the situation of the underprivileged in Indian society. Our sincere accolades, Mr. Aravinda Adiga, for your award of this top literary prize. Best wishes for your authorship in bringing both enjoyment and compassionate reflection to readers worldwide. 